My Seven Chakras, episode 240. Kindness is the antidote to confusion. The Seven Chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body, from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. For thousands of years, this ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. Kumar. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, founder and host of My 7 Chakras, the show where we dive deep into the ancient world to provide you nuggets of wisdom to transform your life. Now, if this is the first time that you are listening to our show, then I just want to let you know that you have arrived at the right podcast, my friend. Action Tribe, many of you know that I've been putting together a reading list for you that features the uh, books that have been recommended on the show by our guests. And thousands of you have already downloaded the document since we uh, released it. Uh, some of the books that are featured on this list are The Alchemist by Polo Coelho, Hands of Light by Barbara Brennan, Energy Medicine by Donna Eden, and Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Now, the thing is that every once in a while, I receive an email or a Facebook message uh, from someone who hasn't been able to find the link to the reading list. So if that is you, uh, then please note to download this reading list, uh, all you need to do is type uh, this link onto your browser tab, which is my 7 forward slash reading list. That's my 7 forward slash reading list. It's super simple. Once you go there, just hit the orange button that says yes, download link, please. Uh, then a box opens up and you have to add your email address. That's it. Once you do, you will receive a link to download your reading list and you can start reading the books. But if you still can't download it, then send me an email at aj at my 7 and with that out of the way, uh, it's now time to bring you our featured guest for today, who is Brad Johnson. So Brad, welcome to the show. Are you ready to inspire? I'm ready to inspire. Thank you for having me. Great. So from psychic ability, channeling, healing, spiritual teaching, dream interpretation, the Akashic records, and more, Brad Johnson, the reality whisperer, has developed these abilities to better understand how reality interacts with us on a personal and collective level. Brad shares his vast higher mind knowledge from all over the world, reflecting his empowering spiritual journey. For nearly a decade, he can show us how we can form an intuitive relationship with the reflections of reality so that we can attract outcomes that serve our true aligned nature. Action Tribe, if you haven't already guessed, this is the second time that Brad is appearing on our show. The first time he appeared was way back when we were just getting started on episode 21. So it's been a long time. To listen to that episode, you can always go to my 7 forward slash 21. That's my 7 forward slash 21. But if you have already listened to that, then let's begin our interview. So Brad, thank you so much for joining me once again. Yes, thank you very much again. Great. So let's begin with some inspiration like we always do. Uh, what is your favorite inspirational quote and how does that apply in your day-to-day -day life? Yes, one quote I've received recently is, kindness is the antidote to confusion. And when we look into the degree of kindness, that it transforms everything. It's the energy that can move mountains. It is love. It is purity. And especially now, since we're going, going through a lot of uh, intense changes here on the planet and with each other as well, is the more that you really just start to bring in a lot more of this kindness and purity of love in your heart. And uh, you're basically just giving without the need of having anything in return because love is the reward itself. That really is what's going to move mountains, transform your reality, shift you into a higher plane where there's just abundance galore. Wonderful. So thanks a lot for sharing that powerful quote with us. And, you know, Brad, over the last couple of months, I have been uh, coming across many exercises and quotes and uh, even stories that relate to the power of the heart, you know, the power of love, which is the most powerful power. Uh, but action tribe you know there's there's a lot of there's a lot of power in the uh, in the idea of kindness and if you practice it uh, each and every day or whenever you get the get the chance you will notice that you not only make an impact on the world around you but more importantly you have an impact within you 
and that helps you get out of the confusion that you might find yourself in so thanks a lot for starting us off with this amazing quote brad uh, now let's uh, jump in uh, you refer to yourself as the reality whisperer so for someone who hasn't yet listen to the first episode could you tell us what exactly does that term mean yeah well because i have uh, really got into many different uh, facets with spirituality consciousness and metaphysics uh, there's a lot of areas that i've dove into uh, since the time i began a lot of it was with psychic ability a lot of it was was with channeling a lot of it was with energy healing a lot of it is looking into the akashic record records, uh, intuitive development. So there's so many things that I do. Uh, and I also do a lot of metaphysical research. I look into uh, channeled aspects of ancient earth history. I, even, I also look into possibilities of our future. So I really couldn't put a label in regards mm-hmm. to what I did because it was such a long laundry list in that way of so many things. And so I really just came up with this term called the reality whisperer and basically that just represents one who is sensitive to understanding how reality communicates with us and it communicates with us in all forms of ways it communicates with us through other people it communicates with us through animals it communicates us through nature being able to just go out to a park and listen to the wind blow and feel Feel the trees, energy around you. Feel the grass, the ground underneath your feet and feel it speaking to you. Listen to the patterns of synchronicity whenever you're asking for something, when you're bringing something into your reality Mm -hmm. and you're getting that synchronistic response. That too is also a caveat as it relates to how reality is communicating with me. Uh, So I've really just gotten to the uh, nature of being able to work with reality and understand when it is communicating with me. Now, you never know when it's going to give you the exact impression of what it is that it wants to tell you, Mm -hmm. but you're being aware that something is happening and you're going with the flow. You're staying in the flow. And so I've become pretty adept with this, and I felt that was the best way to really term what I do because to be a reality whisperer really is to have a combination of all those things together aforementioned and being able to put that together in your life and and living a new form of life that really is not shared within our common media Mm -hmm. got it got it so thanks a lot for sharing now uh, you've been receiving downloads from higher states of consciousness within your dream state on a regular basis since 2008, yes. correct? So how did it all begin for you? Yeah, it started with just being able to uh, create a science fiction novel. And I wanted to know more about uh, the actuality about the extraterrestrial presence. I really wanted to know. I wanted to make a really compelling story, but I wanted to create something that was really uh, shared very, very deeply uh, from what other people have perceived, what ETs or aliens in that sense were all about. And so I started doing a lot of research uh, online, and I just started looking into all these people who have had contacts and uh, certain forms of visitations with beings, uh, psychics, intuitives, contactees, uh, people within the black ops community. And I was discovering that there was just a a very strong commonality with all of them. And they were saying that uh, ETs are very much real and that you can connect with them most commonly through meditation. And the ones that have been contacted are very loving beings. And they, too, uh, believe in a one infinite creator and that we're all connected as one and and that we all just return back into the source when we uh, transition past this life and return back into uh, a very very strong uh, alignment of love. And that's what they're here to do is to really help us to understand what we truly are, and that is love. And I was amazed by this. I never perceived the E.T. uh, understanding like this. I always thought it was the banana-headed creature. Creatures with the second jaws and you know the parasitical <laughs> alien type type uh, message, but I was really just and captivated by this, and so I decided just to put the book aside, and I wanted to look more into meditation because I said that that was it. You know, if you go into meditation, you can start to connect with these beings, and when I started to get involved in meditation, it felt like it was the the big missing void in my life. So I felt I've done a lot of things in my past, but I haven't uh, really got into meditation. I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness, and uh, raised as a witness, you're never really into that stuff. It's always about you know believing in a new system of things and and holding the Bible like it's your holy grail. So I never really liked the religion, and but I was also in that kind of an in between point in saying that I knew God existed, but I just didn't want to represent His idea through religion. But when I started getting into meditation, I just went to a library. I took out a book called Learn How to Meditate. I read it from front to back cover and started doing all the exercises in it and had these profound transformations in meditation, going very, very deep uh, and just going through like these mazes. I guess I could refer to them as like ethereal mazes. 
it's kind of like a first person video game, just going mm-hmm. through these these labyrinths and these mazes and being able to touch these like ethereal conduits that were made out of light. Uh, a lot of them looked like crystal balls and and as soon as I was touching them, I could feel it translate physically into my body. And so it almost felt like a really nice, pleasant, physical tingling sensation. So as I did these day by day by day, I started going asleep at night and I would uh, wake up knowing things I didn't know before. And this is what really kind of aligned me into the journey that I decided to take. So after all of those uh, meditations that I did, I started looking into channeling as well, too, because channeling was really fascinating to me about connecting with other beings. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of looked at it first. I was kind of looking at it as a reporter, or as an investigator at first. And then I was just uh, really enthralled by what these people were able to do and connect. I have an acting background, right? And so I was all about into, into acting and improv. And I was always so fascinated about how a person could just transform themselves and become this other person. And we call it an acting character. But really Mm -hmm. what it is, is that you're actually becoming another person. This is very real. And so this is what channeling was. And it's actually not doing it for show, not doing it for fictional reasons, but doing it because this is another extension of your consciousness coming together into you and so that's where i really got fascinated by channeling and so i started to channel started looking into what's known as automatic writing or i call it now channeled writing and uh, i just had a lot of these great contacts from these collective beings from the pleiades from sirius but when i connected with sirius uh there was a friend of mine who was also a channeler who said well Brad, you have very strong connections with the energies of Sirius, and uh, it, it, it feels like this, this energy wants to talk to you. And so I just uh, aligned myself to Sirius, and instead of expecting a collective, because I was mainly working with collective energies, uh, this uh, entity came together and referred to him as a name, as Adronus. And basically he said, I'm a version of you. 297 years in the future i've come back at this time to share this information with you uh and helping you with your own spiritual evolution and with our arrangement uh as you spiritually evolve you will be taking people with you to spiritually evolve as well too so you will all be in this together is this something that you would like to do and i said absolutely so that's what really began my whole journey on this and then uh, connecting with this intelligence known as Adronus, uh, it has completely reshaped my life. I've looked at life now 180 degrees from how I used to and uh, every day is just more and more amazing than the other. Got it. So you mentioned that he is from the future. How many years was that? Yeah, it was 297. Got it. Uh, but basically he used that as a type of numerological reference as well too. Uh, as a type of synchronicity as well too. Uh, because basically where he exists right now, there's there's no time really. It's just you can mm. Just basically go into any timeline with him uh, and he will communicate. But that was something that almost felt like a numerical code. And that's something that I needed to uh, awaken with that basically may have had with certain activations or anything of that nature. But uh, that's what he revealed was 297 years in the future at that time. Got it. So I love the story, the fact that you started off wanting to write a science fiction novel, correct? And you wanted to create yes. this wonderful novel and you wanted to create an impact in the world. And just to share, you know, many years back when I was a kid, I loved science fiction novels as well. You know, I, I used to read a lot of Isaac Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke. But mm-hmm. somewhere down the line, I sort of lost that passion. So maybe I need to start, you know, rekindling my interest in science fiction uh, as well. But you said that that's where you started. You wanted to, and then you yeah. sort of uh, researched information, restart to people. Yeah, and, like I was, I was really, Really doing something very different than what I was doing, what I'm doing now. Uh, back then, I was doing like a lot of internet marketing. I was even working yeah, on video. I was working on video games as well too. Uh, I was working on uh, just writing and, and doing a lot of computer work as well too. So yeah. this is definitely something that was really more different <laughs> than taking me into that <laughs> old direction. I felt like when I was doing a lot of that stuff, it was fun. Yeah, but it wasn't fulfilling in that way, right? And then that's that's sure. what I felt was something that was missing my whole life was that my spiritual side because I felt it was just heavily tainted being part of this old religion that yeah. I really just couldn't stand. And then that's when I got this call and this meditation energy came together. And a lot of people who I've talked to have said, well, uh, summertime of 2008 was an extremely trend transformative year people were just were really going in through very strong states of awakening during that time and i said well i guess that was my time to to awaken in that way wow that's that's amazing you know because as you mentioned summer of 2008 i'm trying to figure out where i was i know that in this in <laughs> not this summer but just as soon as summer ended 2008 i had the worst worst crash in my life you know i had a bad uh. accident that physically uh, you know i had a lot of uh, scars and stitches but that sort of 
created a, created an awakening for me is to start questioning myself and my identity and who am i and am i just the person i see in the mirror or someone you know beyond that so it's you know it's quite fascinating that you mentioned uh, 2008 in particular uh, as i mm-hmm. look back in my life but you know what i love about what you shared is that you started out as a reporter but very soon you became one among the people you were reporting which i mm-hmm. which i think is is really interesting uh, now adronis is from sirius a constellation correct yes yeah, he'd be from the sirius a star with an Acanus major constellation. Got it. Because, you know, that constellation is, I've always been fascinated by that constellation. Aren't these the three stars that there are? Yeah, well, basically, the uh, the one that he emerges from is called the Dog Star. So it's it's the Dog Star of Sirius. The brightest star in our night sky is that of Sirius A. Okay. Uh, that's where he resides. And he's basically a, a light energy that you could refer to, like a starlight constellation consciousness existing okay. within the star of Sirius A. Yeah. Got it. So could you tell us more about uh, the Syrian species? Like uh, you, you shared a bit more. You, you yeah, shared a bit about he, that. He's, yeah, he's yeah. part of a, a lineage of a very ancient race. It's very, okay. very ancient. It's one of the most ancient ones there is. And uh, they were descendants of uh, human beings that existed within the Lyra constellation. And basically all hu- all humanity existed in Lyra uh, billions of years ago. And okay. it wasn't through a lot of these interstellar, interstellar skirmishes that took place because there were other civilizations that were coming into the fold and a lot of polarity consciousness was taking place. And through a lot of wars that were taking place, a lot of them had migrated past Lyra. And you had some beings that went from Pleiades, you had beings that went from Sirius, you had beings that went from Arcturus to Orion, and it had been scattered all across the sky, all across the stars. Mm-hmm. And so Adronis' people in that sense were of the fourth density at that particular time. And they migrated to Sirius A. They were very much kind of like um, kind of like a monk Nordics in that way, or Nordic monks in the best way I could put it. Uh, they were very much into following a spiritual path. They were basically okay. there were a lot of peacekeepers in that sense. That's really their their nature. And they have uh, they're, they're still learning, even themselves, even in, even where they are now. But they're learning more about the, the nature of consciousness, about how they're all connected to, to everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, teaching a lot of these uh, kind of mentoring, almost like ancient monk, ancient extraterrestrial monk uh, mm-hmm. uh, paths uh, and, and understandings to, to each of us. And that really has been Adronis' gift uh, to me, has been sharing all of this profound information. He is kind of just like a universal encyclopedia. Uh, right. But basically, his people had to go through certain forms of ascendances as well, too. Got it. They basically, exa- again, existed in fourth density. They then moved up into the fifth, and then they moved up into the sixth. And this is a span of, of millions of years. And mm-hmm. so uh, they, they're uh, existing right now in sixth density, and that's how he communicates with me in that way. And I just go into this channeling state and communicate with a lot of the profound energy. But basically, his entire culture is starlight in in the sky and in, in the star right now of uh, Sirius A so they don't really have a quote unquote physical form but they can make themselves physical if they choose mm-hmm. to got it got it so thanks a lot for explaining to me this story this background because that sort of explains the similarity that he has to humans mm-hmm. uh, now my question is what does it feel like uh, you know on your part when you're receiving these downloads from Adronis it's uh, it, it started out very intense when I first started mm-hmm. to connect with him my whole body was just shaking it was like a, it was like striking a tuning fork against a desk and you just feel this whole energy just flowing through you really intensely so i remember i had to do some calibrations with him when i was first starting to vocally channel him and uh, i was basically just doing some deep breathing techniques i was going into meditation i was connecting with his energy he was working with my chakra centers as well too aligning them and my my entire body was just numb. I, I couldn't even barely move my hand. Uh, it felt like you, it felt like you had that that sensation when you're coming back from the dentist, but mm. you have like that novocaine just all throughout your entire body. No, it was kind of like a like a funny yeah, it was kind of like a funny numbness. But okay. uh, my whole body, I could barely just move. I had to like stay on the couch for like half an hour before I could move. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but since after that time. Uh, it started to ease up after that. And now when I communicate with the drones, it's all just very, very natural. It's like I'm just tuning into another hemisphere of my mind and sure. connecting with him in that way. I ground myself in a certain way. I still do certain uh, affirmations when I'm channeling, but it's quite simple to talk to him. We basically have ingrained ourselves together, so he's basically bonded his energy together with mine, mm-hmm. and so it's not so much of a challenge to uh, to bring him through. Got it. So I'm going to dive a bit deeper into density and evolution because many of our listeners might be hearing this term for the very first time. You mentioned mm-hmm. that Adronis and Syrians are six density beings at present, six and density, that's yeah. how he communicates with you, but what does that mean in comparison with beings of other densities? Could you 
provide us some more clarity yeah. in that area. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, right now we exist within a third density and we're moving into a fourth density. Okay. The third, third density would represent that of functioning within three dimensions of space, one dimension of time. So we're basically looking at past, present, future. We're looking at yesterday. We're looking at tomorrow. We're creating those linear aspects of sure. illusion in that way. When you're moving up into fourth density, then it's three dimensions of space and two dimensions of time. So you're basically going sideways in time, which means you're becoming aware of other dimensional realms. You're becoming aware of other dimensions. You're becoming aware of other realities that are uh, congruent with your own. Where Adronis exists, it's basically three dimensions of space, three dimensions of time. So basically, they are nonlinear beings. They can basically pop right here and then go right into the morning and then go right into the evening and then go right into the afternoon. And so they are basically not subjected to the limitations of or the confinements that we would understand understand is space and time. Adronis has basically stated that space and time more so work for them rather than feeling that they work for it. Right, so now it's basically that they are completely in a state of nonlinearity. But basically, what he's also stated is that many different star systems have jurisdictions, and through these jurisdictions, you have to be aware of uh, certain civilizations and their developments. You can't just go popping into a civilization uh, that's still going through certain levels of development and tell them who you are. That would basically violate a lot of their free will, and yeah. that's basically putting you in jeopardy as well too you would actually end up being part of their uh, their collective as well too so there, there's a there's a universal policy and it's really just a, a policy of non-interference and so basically mm -hmm. this is why a lot of beings will not uh just jump in here and just say hey humans we're all here this yeah. is what we're all about it's not about that especially with our planet because we're a planet of free will we still have have to figure things out for ourselves and so they're just here in the background and they're available uh, if people know how to connect with them and uh, they're basically just creating this hands-off policy it kind of goes back, back to star trek where there's the prime directive and that's a very true law it's the law of non-interference and so they're basically just here in the background they're doing a lot of work behind the scenes with us uh, mm -hmm. but they're they're, they cannot just pop in front of the scenes and tell us, you know, where we come from and who we are. That will eventually happen. But right now we're in a certain stage of development. And once we reach a level of maturity, then those particular uh, opportunities can come forward. So as you explain this, it seems like humans are right now, uh, you know, like uh, in kindergarten. No, I wouldn't say they're in kindergarten. No? I would say they're 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 teenagers. <laughs> teenagers. Okay. They're kind of like they're kind of like the adolescent teenagers in that way. Ah, uh, I would okay. say if you were basically looking at us maybe about a hundred years ago, we'd probably be close to that kindergarten elementary school type stage. But I would say we're close to maybe about the the ten to thirteen year olds right now. <laughs> so so in that state, hundred years is not that much of a time, right? So does that mean humans have evolved significantly in we the last hundred years? We have basically, yeah, we, from Adronis' perspective, we basically have shifted in consciousness hundreds of years within this span less than a century. Uh, with yes. the idea of, of our post-industrial age to our digital age where we are right now, for many other planets, that would take them thousands of years to get there. Uh, mm -hmm. For basically, for us, we got there in less than a century. So that's basically, so we could say that our evolution is about on average 10 times quicker than many other developing extraterrestrial civilizations that exist. Got it. So quick question uh, that I had was these star systems you mentioned, they have jurisdictions and there are certain laws, correct? So who, who decides these juris jurisdictions? Is there like a... Well, there are, there are collectives. Okay. I mean, basically, everything works together in cycles. So basically, there are cyclic plans with everything. It's all basically the orientation. I could say, you know, there's there's planetary collectives, there's galactic collectives, but it all just, it all spirals together as we understand interconnectedness. And so it's basically that the galaxy itself has a will. The universe has a will. Okay. Our planet has a will. And all of these wills communicate with each other. So we have our own uh, individual will, then we have a collective will on, on humanity level. And we have a planetary will. All of these wills uh, connect together. And it basically represents the idea of how we understand action and reaction, to which we would understand as karma, that we have positive karma, that we have negative karma in that way. Mm -hmm. And so working with jurisdictions and knowing that there's many other, Adronis would refer to as uh, planetary games going on, these planetary games have certain ground rules. And there are certain uh, policies that need to be followed. Because basically it's not that one entire race is being quote unquote punished or a person is being punished in that way is that if you involve yourself into the affairs of another world then you are going to become a part of that other world you tether yourself into that planet right and so that's basically what's happened to actually many of us as many of us have come from other different uh, galaxies and universes dimensions as well 
and we've come to Earth, and uh, we basically have tethered ourselves here to mm. incarnate as a human being and to have this experience because we've created this kind of energetic contract, and it's through this energetic contract that we're here and we're we're attempting to fulfill something of ourselves. It really, it is getting to know who you are uh, on many different perspectives because everybody else is just a, a catalyst reflection of yourself and so you're getting to understand who you are by looking into everybody else that's a part of your reality as a reminder for you to look within yourself so basically everybody holds the key to your uniqueness it's when you meet these people you have these great conversations now you're feeling inspired to go inside yourself and connect more deeper now you know that part of yourself much more because there is a stimulation factor to another person coming into your reality, having that conversation with you. So now you're saying, oh my goodness, now I'm looking at this, this honeycomb. All oh, these, these little cells and these honeycombs are now starting to come to life because of how I've been able to work with others, because I'm able to understand and expand a lot more. And now I feel like I'm this entire hive that's now just starting to buzz with life. And I'm realizing more about who I am. And now that I realize more than who I am, that when this continues to go up throughout the years, uh, I won't need to be on this earth anymore because my expansion is going beyond the boundaries of the earth. And so that's where you reach uh, an advancement and you move into a different dimension, which is where we're going. And uh, people, again, who transition past the body uh, will basically go into spirit and they'll have all of this uh, understanding with them and they'll decide exactly where they want to go next so some people will return back to earth to incarnate again and again and again uh, mm -hmm. just to really reach those states of expansion people who are really already expanded and learning a lot more will naturally just start to move themselves into different experiments into different games as it were got it got it so you mentioned that over the last 100 years humans have evolved significantly more so maybe than other species uh, yes. my question is and you've alluded to this a uh, while back what's next for humans in this evolution is it the fourth density and yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. how would that work uh, yeah well we're going through the process right now now basically again as i stated everything is cycles and okay. so basically every 25,000 or so years there's great changes that take place upon the planet we have mm -hmm. seen the, the rise and falls of many different ancient civilizations even when we're going back into atlantis we're looking at atlantis as one of the most popular and powerful uh ancient civilizations there was technologically but again all of these particular forms of kingdoms and uh empires have come and gone throughout these uh, cyclic aspects and we're basically nearing the edge of another 25,000 year cycle and this is basically what's referred to in the galactic community as harvest time uh -huh. and basically what, what harvest time represents is that there will be souls that are existing in this dimension that when they reach a certain level of understanding and maturity they will be able to reach themselves into the next plane going into the next plane of dimension, which is basically coming up. Now, we don't have an exact date about when this is happening, but it does feel like it's probably going to be within the next few years. But it does feel like there has been a very strong transition taking place already. We're seeing a lot of shakeup in the political arenas. We're seeing shakeups in basically every facet that we know life to be. Uh, seeing people really just starting to question reality, understand what it is they truly want. People who are intuitively, psychically awakening, uh, awakening to meditation, awakening to yoga, awakening to qigong, to all of these great new aspects that are helping them to work with mind and body as mm -hmm. one. And these are all signs. These are signs that we're moving into a newer level of consciousness and mm -hmm. through that new level of consciousness it requires a new plane to basically stretch out this consciousness as it is developing and so people will uh get into that mainframe that mindset i should say that mindset of going into this next level of dimensional thinking which really is having an open mind being able to be an innovator being able to help other people, having kindness, that love. That's like I said, kindness is the antidote to confusion. And when you start to live more through yourself uh, and develop your own emotions to the point where they are working with you and not against you, then you're being able to feel yourself become a lot lighter. So our body has been going through transmutational effects for quite a few decades. It depends how long you've been on the planet, but uh, it's really something that has began uh, around the times of the post-atomic era. And around that time, we've had waves of volunteers that have come here. Actually, the, the late Dolores Cannon, uh, who was once a hypnotherapist, has also talked about this. She referred to it as the, the three waves of volunteers. And this is very much true, that uh, basically throughout these past 
last 60, 70 or so years that yeah. there has been this incredible shift taking place. And it's all a game plan to basically shift those who are very much into love, into connection, into empathy, into connecting together with others and helping others uh, to evolve and develop themselves as well as themselves. They will be automatically moving themselves from one density to another. Mm-hmm. Basically, the, uh, the the sequence that's taking us from one density to another uh, is through the solar activity that's taking place on the, on the in the star system right now, basically with coronal mass ejections and solar flares. So basically, there will be a sequence. It's kind of like looking at a symphony. Yeah. We're having many different bars of frequencies coming together and uh, hitting many sequences of transformations taking together, but there's basically going to be a culmination wave where there is a solar flash and uh, basically uh, people will start to see these events happening from the sky. And uh, there will just be something that will just be a seamless transition. It will be completely seamless. People won't even know uh, that they're actually in another dimension. And that's basically what's happening, is that we're shifting ourselves, Mm -hmm. kind of going through this rainbow bridge between one world and another. And we don't even know that we're walking this rainbow bridge right now, but many of us are. And there will just be a point where they will reach a combination and we're in a fourth density planet and uh, it's very very different from what we would understand third density to be it's again much more aware of different realities there may, may be much more stronger connections with people's spirit guides uh, people who are connecting with apparitions or what people refer to as ghosts they are able to make some type of astral form come together so you're actually actually communicating with people who have passed from the physical body but you're becoming much more aware of them in this particular type of density it's a much more lighter density Mm -hmm. the closest analogy that adronas has given is imagine if you have a a net and you're taking a goldfish out of a bowl and now you're bringing it into air that's basically what's happening with us is that we're literally changing this molecular vibrational density from something that was very very solid to something that's not quite so solid into fourth density got it thanks a lot for sharing now uh, brad uh, how many galactic species are humans in regular contact with do you have any idea oh it's countless <laughs> it's yeah. really countless there, there's so many beings i mean so many people i've talked to i've talked to thousands of people yeah. uh, throughout these past uh, nearly nearly a decade and uh, thousands of people are talking about different species they've come in contact with a lot of the popular ones are like the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Andromedans, a lot of humanoid beings as well, too. But there's beings that are mantis-like, there are beings that are insectoid-like, there are reptilian beings, there's uh, there's beings that look like cats, that look like lions. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of different beings. There's even a lot of beings here on in this planet that we don't even know about uh, that, are, that are existing in different dimensions. Some of them are or even living inside the Earth as well, too. And this, again, represents the beings that we know as a Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Uh, there are beings, again, that are reptile-like, reptilian, uh, very, very different from uh, some of the other ones, the popular ones that basically stated that they are the, the control grid for humanity, but different ones. Uh, you, you have all types of different beings here. Basically, and this might blow some people's minds in that sense, is that mm-hmm. we would be considered to be uh, kind of like an adopted race yeah. that has been allowed to come here into the star system and utilize the Earth as tenants. And basically, the keepers of a lot of these uh, the, these planets in the star system are insectoids. And basically, it is an insectoid based uh, star system and so you have beings like mantises you have beings like ants you know basically looking at a lot of the common insects that we have on the planet they have a sentient form as well too and basically many of them are surrounding the star system and that we actually have other planets existing in what's known as the oort cloud the oort cloud okay and that these uh, beings are basically it's kind of like their station in that sense but we have basically been like adopted family from them and they're letting us use this planet for our, our particular form of development in that sense because they also assisted in the engineering of our creation so this is this is something that's really really uh, exciting just getting into the understanding that not only does other races and civilizations exist, but they have a very enormous role in making us who we are in helping us to come on this planet and basically working with uh, this, this world to help us understand and acknowledge and evolve ourselves. And to me, those are very compassionate uh, beings who's basically giving up a beautiful world to us so that we can, we can evolve and kind of like play on a playground and say, okay, yeah, don't beat up the other kids, you know, make sure you're playing nicely, go on the playground and, mm-hmm. you know, worry about, look about and look into contribution. Don't worry about, uh, you know, things that, that get you down. And so they're, they're basically being these kind of like overseers. But there's many different beings. It's not just the insectoids. There's quite a few other ones as well, too, that are working with us 
So now basically humanity has what's known as 22 different genetic races contained within our DNA. And uh, we can almost refer to this as the 22 different archetypes in that way. So there are uh, this, this 22 race that basically are farmer races, and they have uh, worked with humanity genetically uh, for thousands and thousands of years. So, and yet, again, a lot of them have mixed roles. Some of them don't even like each other, <laughs> but they still, have, they still have truces together and are working together in that particular way because humanity is their progeny on a collective level. So they're basically deciding exactly what's going to happen with this planet. But mo- the majority is that a lot of these beings are working with us and are connecting with us and helping us to reach into a, a new age of transformation. And there will come a point where we will evolve into a level of maturity where they will uh, absor- absorb and, and connect to us in that way. It's kind of like looking at your little kid and saying, your little kid's not just going to move out of the house and going to go get an apartment and start living on their own when they're still 10 years old, right? They're yeah. still, they still need to go through certain levels of maturity. And and once they reach the big boy years in that sense, and there they've reached that level of responsibility, it shows that they can take care of themselves. They're not hurting anybody or anything like that. They're really starting to prosper. Now they can move into going into another suite, going into their own life in that way. Well, that's where humanity is going on a collective level, is that we need to learn about, you know, that there's, there's still a lot of things we can't do to this planet we cannot hurt this planet we cannot use technology that's going to harm this world we cannot use technology that's going to harm ourselves that's going to put uh, dangerous stuff in our food that's going to poison our air you know you cannot live like that and so all of these things have to change and transform first once that happens then uh, yeah absolutely we will become a starbound civilization wonderful so action drive a lot of new topics a lot of fascinating information Uh, if this is something that you've heard for the very first time then make sure that you are listening with an open uh, open mind uh, to all this information that is pouring in and uh, you, you know it'll all make sense as we pro- pro- you know pro- proceed uh, in this interview so Brad uh, could you talk to us about light circuitry attunement that's something that you do right so what yeah do yeah firstly what I'll say to everybody as well too if you're hearing this for the first time I liken it to the analogy is like going to a water fountain to get a drink instead of getting sprayed down by, by a fire hose, right? So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a heads up for everybody. You really have to have a really big open mind for a lot of this stuff because it, it blew me away when I first started to look into all this, and it still is. And I consider myself a pretty open-minded person, and all this stuff is really still can, coming together, and it blows my mind to this day. Uh, but yeah, there's a, uh, there's a new healing technique that I've developed called light circuitry attunements. And light circuitry attunements is all about working with trauma body in that way is that when we're we're basically young we again go through a lot of these particular traumas whatever it may be we have a thousand and one reasons why uh, traumas can exist but basically what the light circuitry attunement is attempting to do is work with these traumas to repair them to heal them in that particular way but basically what gets in the way of trauma is emotion and so we are basically working with the person to to help uh, heal and uh, settle the, the emotional states down so that we can get right into the trauma. But basically, I've, I've done this with hundreds of people already, and uh, it's, it's had really profound results. Uh, it is basically a form of instantaneous healing. It would be very, very similar to what people experience when they're going in for a, a hypnotherapy session. If they're basically able to regress themselves very, very deeply, and then they come out and they notice that the changes have actually happened instantaneously with their physical body. It's a very similar construct here with light circuitry attunements is that we basically do not have to go into a hypnotherapy type session. It's still very, very conscious, but you're basically surrendering yourself. What's really required is, is openness. And if you can really be open and vulnerable with yourself as well, too, and I guide you through the entire uh, healing process of the attunement, then basically people have come out of it and they've transformed uh, they've had 30 plus years or so of really harsh conflict uh, on yeah. traumatic levels and they come out of this session like a new person and it's it's really amazing to see i've even done this on myself as well too and it's transformed me uh profoundly and it's based on a lot of work that adronis has shared with me over mm-hmm. the years and so i kind of take all the that energy that adronis has given me i put it into this big puzzle and uh, it now has a big picture on it and that was uh, light circuitry attunement so something that has been several years in the making and uh, it has now been made into a, a, a solid technique amazing now on the same topic of light uh, i want to talk about uh, merkaba mm-hmm. and this, this is something that really fascinates me and i always want to learn more about it could you talk to our audience and talk tell me what exactly is a merkaba yeah, well, if you're looking at Merkaba in that sense, it's basically the ancient Hebrew word which represents light spirit body. 
Okay. And so basically, I, there's actually a, uh, a course that I've done on my website, realitywhisper.com, that has uh, the Merkaba meditation series. And uh, basically helps you to work with this the Merkaba instrument within your body. It's basically looking at your light body in that way. And it's helping you to go into certain levels of meditation and understand that the, the deeper you go into yourself, you can feel feel yourself spinning you can feel yourself rotating and basically people who are very much into meditation here will notice that when you're really going in you may notice that you'll start getting sensations coming in and some of these sensations feel like you're rotating without rotating or tilting without tilting right so you basically feel these energetic sensations coming through your body that's a sign of the merkaba vehicle that's a sign of your light body your fields are rotating. And so basically the Merkaba is what we would understand as one of the closest aspects to our true form. It, it goes beyond the flesh. It goes beyond the physical body. And it's basically our chariot. It's our transit device that can actually take us into different dimensions of reality. So when a person really aligns harmoniously with their Merkaba, and I've certainly had experiences where I've aligned with my light body and I've connected and I've kind of consciously traveled to many different dimensions. You can't even put it on a map in that way. Uh, <laughs> But you basically go to these different dimensions and you're just wowed by everything. Your whole body just feels like it's just surging with energy and it's absolutely incredible. But that's really your your natural self, the closest aspect to your natural self. We'll be looking at these geometries. And so it's basically like looking at two interlocking tetrahedrons. So one tetrahedron uh, is in standard position. The other one is up upside down and it's interlocking together uh, at 19.47 degrees latitude between both of the, uh, the, the hemispheres of the Merkaba. Mm-hmm. And basically this represents sacred geometry. It goes back into the idea that when you're able to measure the, the geometry of spheres, you use things like the Merkaba vessel in that way. And it, it, it accurately maps everything out. So it's the natural geometry of the universe is the natural geometry of creation. It's how we are able to uh, work with ourselves. So when you basically look into sacred geometry, then you understand more about how, how your spirit works, understanding more about how uh, this, this universe is indeed a hologram and that we're even beyond that as well, too, and that we're just we're so profound we can't even put into words. We're just we're complete stillness and we're complete dynamic at the same time. And so basically being able to understand your Merkaba body is really to understand your soul, it's to understand your spirit, it's to understand your connection to all things. Got it, got it. Now, uh, I've heard uh, that, you know, the Ascended Masters, for example, maybe Babaji and Jesus, they used to use the Merkaba for teleportation? Is, oh, yeah. Heard- yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard that there have been some people who have actually been able to teleport on this planet. And not, uh, you don't even have to look back too much into the ancients. There's mm-hmm. actually people nowadays that have actually been heard to have been able to teleport. If you go into many of these uh, uh, indigenous uh, uh, areas on the planet and yeah. you meet some of these tribes, these tribes can do incredible things. Uh, there, there have actually been reports, uh, again, maybe trying to bury these things, but basically there have been reports of flying children, uh, children who can actually fly in the air. Yeah. and levitate in that way. Uh, there's also you know, a lot of these ancient masters who are able to levitate off the ground. They're basically going into trance states. They're uh, stating mantras, being able to notice that they're no longer tethered to the earth, uh, yeah. and they're able to levitate themselves up. So there's a lot of phenomenal things that we have the capability of doing. But the thing is that we're going to have a very challenging thing doing those things in modern society you, just, you, you can't do them you simply can't uh, not without people saying what the heck what's going on you just teleported from your apartment over into this grocery store and you know it's it, it just it won't compute and you basically have a lot of attention that you don't want to have and sure. really the place the place to connect with a lot of these abilities is in the wilderness is into nature in that sense uh, to basically really kind of isolate yourself and that's why again a lot of these isolated tribes have been able to get away with it because there is no modern civilization that's there and and always just in this quirkiness and feeling how did you do this how is that possible that defies all science and all that stuff yeah you know and they they couldn't care less about science and so really the whole idea is that this is something that's natural to them uh so again it's something you can really do in a modern world but if you uh, decide to go out into the wilderness and maybe meet some people who can teach you this absolutely we all have the capabilities to teleport we all have the capabilities to levitate we all have the capabilities to bilocate to become many copies of ourselves uh, the list goes on and on there's there's all kinds of incredible capabilities i've even demonstrated some particular fascinating abilities as well too uh, being out in the freezing cold and keeping warm being able to lift up my mm. own body temperature as well too they call out the tumo technique that was uh, again a buddhist meditation uh, 
There's another one that you do in Qigong, which is called the Art of a Thousand Steps, where you're able to do a certain breathing technique and you're able to do long jogs or long runs and without even panting or without even being tired. Uh, there, there's really incredible abilities that we all have. And it's just a matter about being able to train ourselves into getting into that particular alignment. And again, sometimes modern society isn't the best place to do it it really just needs to be somewhere a little bit more isolated we are kind of out of that flow of the metropolis areas and somewhere a lot more quiet where you can just be alone by yourself and your mind and you're not mm. bringing any kind of internet technology with you you're just you're leaving all of that behind got it thanks a lot for sharing that now we're connected on facebook and very mm-hmm. recently i saw you a photo of you where you're meditating inside what looks like a hollow pyramid, a pyramid yeah. mm-hmm. joined by metallic pipes uh, might be yep. mistaken it's but what my, exactly it's is in that? my front room right now <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> what exactly is that and, and well, how, that's, how does uh, it help you yeah, it's just a it's a it's a meditation pyramid. Uh, actually, yeah. you'll, you'll find this quite commonly on Amazon. Actually, if people want to check it out, you just go to oh, really? Amazon and just and yeah, and just type in uh, meditation pyramid, and you'll find these standing pyramids. The one I have has about a six foot uh, base to it. Uh, it's uh-huh. about four four and a four quarter feet uh, tall. Uh, and I basically just go and I have a little uh, chair, a little floor chair okay. that I sit in, and I'm just meditating in it. And there was actually a picture I took. Look, when I was first getting the meditate, when I was first getting the uh, the pyramid together, I yeah. sat in the pyramid. I took a picture, and you can actually see my aura in it. You can also I see, did, yeah, uh, yeah. You can see the aura of the pyramid as well too. This is what pyramid energy does. It's it's basically a channel. It's an amplifier. It basically condenses all of the cosmic energy, and will basically just funnel up out through its geometry so basically pyramids were used in ancient times not just because they look cool but because there is an initiation process to it Uh, basically uh, a lot of the sages a lot of ancient priests would go inside pyramids and lay in the sarcophaguses and they would basically go through this anointing of themselves they would basically go into astral body the amplification of the pyramid would basically allow you to leave your body and being able to travel these different astral dimensions and being able to uh, reconcile with any particular forms of woes or karmic history that you may have. And uh, again, sometimes it can be like, the, it's kind of like the best of times, the worst of times within a pyramid. Uh, there was also reports of Napoleon going into a pyramid and he basically experienced the worst night of his life. He basically just went inside. He thought he was going to become an ascended master mm-hmm. and he went inside the pyramid. He went out screaming, you know, and he basically never going in there again right uh that, that's just give the idea it's a very deep reflection uh to the windows of your soul and so when you're really connecting with a pyramid energy like if you're going to the great pyramid of giza uh, and and sitting in the king's chamber or lying down in the king's chamber and if it was rebuilt into the form as it was in those earlier times yeah many thousands of years years ago then you would basically have these incredible ascension like experiences uh there are basically people in that sense who are now completely in alignment with their light bodies and they're they have these anointed abilities they have these super abilities in that sense they could come out they could start levitating things they can come out and they can start becoming telepathic uh that's basically what these pyramids do but there's there's a science to them they're really is uh and you really yes just uh, what i basically use mine for is just for meditation i'm not looking to ascend out of the light body or anything like that but i use it for i use it for meditation and uh, i go into these particular states and i've had adventures as as it were uh inside the the pyramids i've been able to go to an ancient planet that was once in our star system known as maldek that is now the asteroid belt in our star system but this was once a super earth that Mm. was about five or six times larger than earth itself and i was able to go back in time and looking into what their civilization was like and and they had like a giant t-rex it was like 200 feet tall it was like the size of godzilla Uh, it was just running around and rampaging and attacking these again very tall humans as well too and some of the humans were 15 20 30 40 50 feet tall as well too and that's where we have a lot of our giant legends in that sense we're basically migrations of beings from maldek that came to earth uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago and uh, lived on the surface as well too so basically this is why a lot of people are starting to notice they're getting this attention of looking into how some people have dug up skeletons that were 10 15 20 30 40 feet tall uh human skeletons and mm-hmm. so I, 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 I tell you i could talk your ear off about all this stuff but, uh, <laughs> we, we might have to have another track. episode <laughs> might have to yeah yeah but For basically sure. the pyramid the pyramid has really helped me into going into these meditative states and, nice. and seeing more to more just just basically going wherever you wish you just kind of put your intentions into it and you'll you'll go into those kind of dimensional travel states just like the merkaba vessel nice but you built your own 
pyramid, right? No, You've not I, did, I didn't build my own. This one, I used to. Uh, back in 2009, I used to build okay. some pyramids, but I thought, you know what, I'll just do the easy job this time. <laughs> I'll just, uh, I'll see if I can find one, like a kit. And there was this sure. kit that came to my, together in the mail, and I put it all together. So I, I did put it all together. I just, uh, it's, it's very simple. It's just basically car, uh, copper rods, and there's little connectors with it, and uh, there's, a, there's a capstone. And then there's an organite crystal ball and you just hang that, uh, just below the capstone. And, uh, I just bought a little floor chair as well too, just get myself nice and comfortable. And I just meditate inside that pyramid and I have these incredible journeys. It's, it's wonderful. Wonderful. So, so we've been talking about a lot of uh, different topics today. We spoke about multidimensional entities and, and channeling and the future of humanity in terms of human evolution. So my question to you is, does everyone, uh, or at least all humans have the ability to channel and communicate with uh, multidimensional species. They do in their own way. Uh, it doesn't mean everybody does it the same way that I do it, uh, or yeah. some of these other channels might do it in that sense. But yes, we all communicate in different ways. And I, I basically refer to that channeling is just communication. It's communication to the extensions of your consciousness. Uh, basically, when people come into our life for the first time, and we're having really great communications with them and great conversations with them, I should say. And it's just, it's just a beautiful moment. You notice you're just saying things to them. You never thought you'd say that's a channeling experience as well too, right? We're always channeling in our own way. We just don't realize it. We've just become very, very much uh, acclimatized to the idea of having conversation or acclimatized to the idea of using our imagination that it's just so natural. We don't really need to call it anything else, but really it's just connecting together and establishing connections with other levels of consciousness that exist and bringing that into ourselves and being a, a vessel to channel that information and share it. So based on what uh, you've spoken today, what is it one action step that you'd like to recommend for our listeners? A one action step? Well, meditation would certainly be a good uh, recommendation I would give for everybody. Uh, if meditation is not your thing, then basically I would say just start writing, uh, create, a, create a journal, create a diary, talk about how your day was, talk about you know what, what challenges you went through the day, what triumphs you went through the day, uh, and just leave that post and come back to it later on and just start looking at it as an observer and just looking into the idea about how you are willing to develop yourself. You look into yourself and say, oh, you know what, I've noticed I've been looking into this financial problem for a very long time or I've had some health problems here for a very long time and I didn't realize it. So meditation can do that. Uh, creating a journal can do that. Uh, saying prayers, giving your intentions, just being able to state affirmations uh, on a daily basis and just keeping track of yourself. Really just understand that when you really keep track of yourself on a daily basis and you see all of these nuances that come together on a daily basis, you actually see exactly how powerful you are. And it's really important that you're, you're just being able to keep track of your evolutionary process because that way you're realizing your capabilities. Everybody, I wouldn't say everybody, but almost everybody comes to me and says, Brad, what is my gift? What is my potential? What is my ability? And I said, everything. <laughs> everything is your ability. Nothing is impossible. And so really when you really look into that mentality, uh, and it, it's, it's all about what you validate. If you validate and say that I'm just working a nine to five office job and I have to do this and I have to do that, then that's what you're telling the universe. Your universe is saying, okay, well, this is all he feels he wants to do. This is all she feels she wants to do. And that's what they're going to continue to, to experience each and every single day. If you want to shake things up, you need to validate the shaking up. You need to validate the idea. Yeah, maybe I'm going to get into meditation. Maybe I'm going to get into spiritual teaching, whatever it may be. And I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to validate it. You need to command the universe to work together in your alliance, in your, on your side. If you basically feel that the universe and everybody else is against you, it will be against you. The universe only understands two things, focus and lack thereof. So if you're putting a lot of focus into how much you feel you belittle yourself, the universe is going to give you all the belittling you could ever ask for. If you feel that you're able to harmonize yourself and love yourself and really they move yourself into a new level of empowerment. You're putting all that focus into it. Guess what? The universe is going to put all of that in there. It's going to support you 100% of the way. So what I always say is give yourself the greatest validations to love the, the impossible within you because everything that is impossible really just stands for I am possible. So that's really what I would share to everybody. Everything is possible through you. So Action Tribe, I hope you're learning a thing or two today. 
if you are make sure you share one sentence that summarizes what you've learned today on social media whether it's twitter instagram or facebook and make sure you use the hashtags hashtag action tribe and hashtag my seven chakras to share with the world what is that one thing that you learned from today's episode you know sometimes you might feel a bit confused when it comes to posting on social media you might be thinking to yourself what should i post on social media right so i'm going to make it a bit easier for you post your biggest takeaway on today uh, today's episode on your favorite social media platform using the hashtags hashtag action tribe and hashtag my seven chakras now as we come close to today's uh, the end of today's episode take a moment to really feel grateful for where you are in life right now you may not have it all in fact you might have many challenges in your life right now but the very fact that you haven't given up speaks a lot about your powerful state of mind the very fact that you have chosen to listen to this podcast and to this episode you know means that you are using the power of the internet to transform your life which is awesome it really means that you are on track to greatness you're getting there and whenever you feel like you're all alone with no hope remember that aj and his featured guests will always keep you company on this amazing amazing journey that you are on right now to live your life's purpose because you were meant to live a life of meaning and purpose and and as uh, albert einstein once quite mystically remarked strange is our situation here upon earth each of us comes for a short visit not knowing why yet sometimes seeming to divine a purpose so keep that in mind and as we come to the last round today which is the wisdom round uh let's take some notes so that you can take action So Brad what is the best advice that someone has ever given you Reality is by interpretation and that was something that Adronas has told me when I first started to channel is that no matter what you think you see of the world you're always seeing it through through your own eyes and that it is important for us to really understand that everything that we do is based upon our own interpretation and that we really are the creators of our own reality because we perceive it everything in our own unique way and to perceive in that way is to create and so really reality is by interpretation so whenever you get hung up on a person's idea of feeling that they have have to do it you have to do it their way in this way in that sense that's basically looking at an interpretation through their eyes and that's not who you are as a unique creator as a unique creator you will always see this world you will always see people you always see everything that is through your own unique eyes as reality is by interpretation So name one habit that keeps you moving that keeps you going. Oh, consciousness. <laughs> that's that's my big uh, my big habit is knowing that every time I wake up each day just gets better and better and I always have these new ideas, these new innovations. I'm a, a very innovative type guy and I I love imagination. Uh imagination keeps me going. The ability to know that you always continue to prosper each and every day. Thank you to that beautiful gift of imagination. imagination got it so what is your morning routine like these days do you have a morning routine uh usually it's uh, taking a while to get out of bed uh <laughs> you know uh, having a shower getting ready and then i usually go downstairs and i'll uh, just start meditating a little bit sometimes i'll go in my pyramid sometimes i'll, I'll wake up with doing some qigong as well too i don't really have too much of a quote unquote morning routine a lot of them just basically i leave it to to the flow of whatever i'm taking in that sense but commonly it's been usually a, a, a qigong type morning as i do a lot of qigong uh and i'll sometimes i'll just go into a pyramid the pyramid here and i'll meditate uh sometimes i'll just pop out on the computer i'll start looking at emails and looking at inspirations as well too i'll start creating new ideas uh everything comes together so i'm very much in a state of flux but um i would like to think that i'd like to get up and, and meditate and get ready for the day and just be thankful that another day is here in this body in this life so name one book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners the law of one which is uh done by uh carla rickard and the love and light research project uh the law of one material has really shaped my life and that's probably my favorite uh book book series of them all so uh the law of one the raw raw material would be it's it's very very uh cryptic in that way but it's it's definitely been my favorite read out of any other book i've ever seen so i should drive i know how much you love the book recommendations on the show and i know that many of you get these books as soon as you hear them shared so that's why audible.com is offering action tribe one free audiobook download with a free 30 day trial so that you can get to check out this service now once again audible is listening to a book 
as opposed to just reading a book. So you can do it on your you know, way to work or when you're traveling. Uh, and I lo- really love uh, this new way of uh, going through a book. And Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android or Kindle. And it also has books like The Chakra System by Anadia Judith, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda and A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. To get your free gift, that is your first audiobook today, go to my 7 forward slash free book. Once again, that's my 7 forward slash free book to start listening to your book today. So, Brad, thank you so much for joining us once again for the second time on this show. Uh, before you go, tell us one thing that you're grateful for and how we can find you. Well, thank you, AJ. Hey again, thank you for having me on the program today. Uh, yeah, for people who want to find out more about me, you can just go to my website. It's www.realitywhisper.com. That's realitywhisper.com. I'm actually in the pro- process of creating a brand new website that's going to eventually uh, take over realitywhisper.com. It's not ready yet, but uh, it's called New Earth Teachings. So when that comes together, that'll be my new uh, platform in that way but that'll be coming in just before the end of the year but right now you can just go to realitywhisper.com i do private sessions as well too the light circuitry of human healing that i was talking about uh the work about meditations series is in there as well too there's a lot of exciting stuff you can check out on that website and of course you can always email me at info at reality dash whisper.com just noting that down there you go action tribe uh if you want to learn more about what you heard about today then go to reality whisperer.com we'll have the link in the show notes so that you can go through the quote that was shared some of the nuggets from today's episode all of that stuff uh uh, you can go to it on the website now uh, brad thank you so much uh, for coming on our show talking to us about uh, multi-dimensions adronis the syrians and channeling and taking us one step closer to a human revolution thank you aj thank you very so much for having me and uh, blessings to you and all of your listeners thank you you are listening to my seven chakras Go to mysevenchakras.com. Download your free gift, get inspired, and take action. Transform your life today.